So for more, we bring in Dean of the Miami Business School, John Quelch. John, thank you so much for your time. There's a lot to dive into, starting with the global supply chain that's been disrupted. We've already been warned several times, time and time again since the start of this. And as mentioned, China accounts for one third of global exports for 2018, that is. How long before we see China operating at full capacity? And is there a timeline for this? I don't think there's a uh, firm timeline. The timeline will vary by industry. But I, I would expect it to be extremely unlikely uh, that we will see a uh, return to full capacity and full production before uh, uh, July of this year. Uh, there, there are several reasons for that. One is that all of the factories that closed have to uh, be recertified uh, before they can be reopened. Uh, secondly, there's the concern that two uh, precipitous return to work, bringing many workers who've been stranded in different parts of the country back together in a factory, uh, could result in a second wave of infections. And if there's one thing the Chinese don't want to do, it's to um, be too aggressive in restoring the economic engine at the expense of a uh, public health risk, uh, which no one wants to take. And then I think the third factor uh, is now the level of demand that would would be evident in the export markets in the West, uh, because now we're facing a uh, demand slowdown, potentially, in uh, the Western markets as a result of a consumer lack of confidence or drop in confidence, and that's going to affect the demand that uh, is imp imposed on these factories. So it, in a curious way, the slowdown in Western countries is actually going to run in parallel with the gradual ramp-up of uh, supply in China. And, and now we've seen it across several industries and companies have already seen disruptions in the supply chain as we just talked. Now, the tech industry and the auto industry, as just mentioned, uh, are, are big effect, bigly affected, as Trump would say, I guess. But, but more importantly, I want to know, what are the effects that we're seeing that we're not seeing as of today that we could see in the future? Well, f f first of all, you're absolutely right to uh, hone in on the auto and the tech area. Uh, there's definitely a uh, shortage uh, in terms of availability of electronics parts uh, and uh, particularly CPUs. Uh, this is definitely a problem. And the absence of uh, air freight availability uh, means that it's actually quite problematic for, even though these items are high value low bulk items and therefore could be shipped by air on an emergency basis, that the air freight is simply not available to do that. So that's point one. Point two, to take a different industry, um, we've all read, I think, uh, about the number of uh, container ships that are essentially sitting idle uh, in the Pacific uh, or outside of Chinese ports, uh, unable to uh, unload their cargoes, or if their cargoes can be unloaded, uh, the, uh, the warehouse capacity at the ports is uh, uh, jammed, and there aren't truckers available in many cases to move. Uh, uh, the goods that are coming into China uh, to uh, their destination points because the factories are still shut. So what that means is that you have all of these containers and cargo vessels uh, tied up off the Chinese coast. That has created a shortage of refrigerated cargo capacity on the west coast of the United States. So you have uh, a lot of California farmers this time of year uh, sending fresh fruit, fresh oranges mm -hmm. uh, to China. Mm -hmm. They're not able to do that uh, because uh, the cargo capacity is simply not available to uh, load those goods onto uh, vessels to China. So those those goods, those perishable items, could end up uh, in the uh, U.S. supermarket, uh, lowering drastically uh, the price of uh, fresh oranges, for example. Well, and I want to move on just a little bit. We talked about it earlier in the show about the airline industry that's significantly being impacted by this coronavirus. Uh, how long do you predict these airlines will it will take for them to go back to doing business as usual, and will we see uh, increased prices in, in flights in the near future? 
Well, I think uh, it's very problematic uh, as to when the, the uh, travel industry will recover, and that's going to depend on when we see an evident peak in the number of uh, confirmed cases in the U.S., uh, with then a declining number of cases confirmed on a day-by-day -day, uh, basis. Uh, until that peak is uh, clearly reached, uh, we won't have visibility into uh, how soon uh, travel uh, will be able to be resumed as normal. Um, I do think that um, uh, the airlines, you know, clearly very, very uh, problematic for them. They're making a lot of changes in terms of uh, customer service, right. uh, waiving uh, cancellation fees, etc. Yeah, that's not something we've seen uh, too repeatedly before. And again, they're saying it's not a safety issue, even if they're lowering prices right now. It's more, or it's, rather, it's not an economic problem. It's a safety mm. issue, as most people are concerned. Uh, John Qualchstein of the Miami Business School, thank you so much for your your expertise. Thank you.